Trevor Hunter here with Dirt Bike Test, and today we are going over the 2023 450 off-road shootout. So right now we have four bikes here. We have the Yamaha YZ 450FX, the Kawasaki KX 450X, Honda CRF 450RX, and the Gas Gas EX 450F. These are, these are all of their competition off-road race bikes um, designed for like GNCC, National Grand Prix, kind of National Heron Hound use, um, kind of their designated off-road race bikes with very minimal changes from the motocross platform over to make it more kind of off-road friendly. Uh, most of these bikes come with bigger tanks, 18-inch rear wheel, softer suspension, maybe some updated mapping for, uh, to accommodate the off-road setting, and made some very minor, minor tweaks. Um, <clears throat> but lar these are largely based on the motocross models. Um, and a lot of the mods are something that any of you could do to a motocross bike, but it's nice that the OEMs are offering this as a production platform that you don't have to make this. And, uh, and a lot of these bikes you can go race right off the showroom floor and not worry about running out of gas or getting pinch flats from 19 inch wheels or anything like that. So I kind of started all off, <clears throat> we had eight or nine different riders ranging from kind of novice, intermediate, weekend warriors to pro off-road guys, to kind of vet 30, 40, 50 plus um, off-road racers and trail riders. So we kind of had a really good uh, mix of riders and rider skill levels, height, sizes, abilities, kind of just cover all the bases. And uh, it's actually the, the feedback was very interesting and the biggest takeaway is all these bikes are really good. We really don't want to rank these bikes simply because they are, are all really good. Um, there's really no bad bike, they're just different bikes and depending on the rider, some riders adapted well to different bikes quicker than others, but really all these bikes are good. Uh, but if we were to rank these, these are the results we came out with. In first place, the Kawasaki came out with 13 points. Tied for second was the Yamaha and the Honda, both at 20 points. And in fourth place is the Gas Gas at 27 points. But every single one of our test riders said they could feel comfortable racing any of these bikes with very minimal, if any, changes to these bikes. Come, in, come off the ride off the showroom floor, stock clicker, stock suspension, set the sag, kind of change the handlebar, move, move the handlebars up and down, the levers, um, just the very, very basic stuff uh, that we did. And we went testing with over three different days with eight or nine different riders, and these are the, kind of the results we came out with. So in no particular order, um, we'll start with the Kawasaki. This is a very neutral, all around, just very good bike that every single rider kind of just felt comfortable on. From the seating position, to the motor, to the handling, there's very little complaints with this bike. We'll start with the ergonomics, just the seat, to the foot peg, to the handlebars, that's all really good. And kind of what sets this apart from a lot of the other bikes is the foot peg mounts can, are adjustable, so you can put them in a lower position, and the handlebar uh, mounts, like a lot of the other bikes now have, uh, but Kawasaki kind of pioneered this, is you can move the handlebar mounts to the forward or backward position and rotate the clamps and the mounts. Um, so the Kawasaki is by far the most um, adjustable in terms of the cockpit uh, com that comes stock, and a lot of our riders, especially our taller riders, uh, really favored that and really kind of, yeah, it's a big deal. I mean. <clears throat> You have riders like myself, who's 5'7", to riders that are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, uh, that are supposed to fit on the same bike. Uh, being able to change the handlebar and foot peg positions uh, is a really big deal. But ergonomically, the Kawasaki feels right at home with just about every rider. Um, and that's one big thing that uh, the Kawasaki received a lot of praise for. And moving on to the kind of the chassis feel of the Kawasaki is another good one. Uh, just the bump absorption and just the general chassis characteristics of the bike is very accommodating to a lot of riders. Um, whether you're a fast guy, a slow guy, you're old, you're young, um, kind of all the riders really felt comfortable and confident in riding this Kawasaki fast. Um, and anyway, as the conditions got rougher and rougher, I think that's where the Kawasaki chassis kind of started to shine a little bit more um, over some of the other bikes. And it's just, it's very forgiving and neutral and easy to ride. You can corner on the front wheel, you can corner on the rear wheel, um, kind of the corners not the best cornering bike for sure, but still one of the good, really good cornering bikes, and it's one of the more stable bikes as well. So it offers a good blend of cornering and stability, which is uh, very important in off-road racing. The power on the Kawasaki, it's more of a, I'd say more of a traditional kind of a brute power. Uh, it's got pretty good low-end 
Uh, very good mid-range and going into the top, it revs out pretty good as well. So across the board, it has a very strong, almost sort of a linear power band <clears throat> where there's no real big surgeries or drop-offs and it just puts the power down uh, nicely. Uh, doesn't, it's not gonna rip your arms out, it's not that aggressive, uh, but it's also aggressive enough to where it's exciting and it's snappy and it's probably got one of the best throttle response um, of all the bikes out there, which is uh, makes it keep it lively and kind of peppy and fun uh, when the conditions are right. But overall, the, the engine, especially with the, uh, the white aggressive coupler, that was, seemed to be the favorite amongst most of our riders. Um, just very good all around power that, you know, you can go from the mountains to the desert to Grand Prix to motocross track and kind of feel confident and uh, have all the power that you need and be able to use it effectively as well. Another big thing with the chassis is it kind of, uh, kind of feels loose in a sense and it honestly it doesn't really, the bike doesn't care that it feels loose which is kind of, kind of unique. Um, the Kawasaki kind of slide it around, you kind of be, kind of, you don't have to be super precise or you just kind of just ride the bike and the, the chassis and everything will adapt to what you're doing in the terrain. It um, doesn't really fight back, it doesn't really kind of give you much feedback, it just kind of conforms to the ground and conforms to what you're doing and just goes and that's kind of part of that smooth, uh, easy to ride chassis feel that we talked about a little earlier. The suspension on the Kawasaki, this is probably one of the weaker points on this bike for most of our riders as it just felt slightly imbalanced, especially with the softer fork. Um, just a little, especially for West Coast off-road, uh, speeds are higher, bumps get bigger. Um, so if you take it to a GNCC or go back east in the tighter woods, uh, it's not as prevalent as it is out here. Um, but in the conditions we were in, a lot of the, the riders felt the suspension was unbalanced with a little softer fork than shock and just kind of soft um, suspension overall. Some of the kind of complaints that a lot of our riders had are the levers, and especially the front brake lever. It's very thin and uncomfortable and just not the, not the best feeling <clears throat> when it comes to pull. And then the front brake in general as well, is probably one of the weaker front brakes out of all the bunch. Yeah, the front brake lacks some power. Um, it kind of goes soft after a while. And just, yeah, the front brake in general, um, between that lever and just the braking power itself wasn't the, wasn't the standout on this bike. Another thing is five or 10 years ago, this wouldn't have been as prevalent, but the air filter design on this bike really isn't great at all. Uh, the air box is super tight. You need two tools, a 10 millimeter and eight millimeter to get the side plate off. Uh, you've got to unthread the filter gauge bolt, pull, pull the filter out. 99% of the time you drop dirt in the kind of the air filter boot. So the air filter design five or 10 years ago would have been standard or even better than standard. But in today's day and age, it's really kind of, with all these bikes back here, it's probably the worst design of the ball. And that's kind of something to think about. Um, when you're working on the bikes, you're changing air filters a lot, kind of a pain to deal with. And it's definitely uh, probably the worst design out of all these bikes out here. Last thing is this bike doesn't come stock with a big tank. Uh, a lot of racers will put a dry brake tank on uh, for quick pit stops and everything, but it is something to think about that all these other bikes, you can go race an hour or our woods race or whatever and not to worry about running out of gas whereas this bike comes with a stock motor tank and that's uh, definitely something you have to think about uh, to do any real off-road racing or even real riding uh, you kind of have to go out and buy a gas tank one of the first things so that's uh, that's one thing that you have to think about with this Kawasaki. Moved on to the Honda uh, probably the standout on the Honda was the motor uh, very powerful tons of power tons of torque uh, very lively, kind of aggressive power band as well. And a lot, of, a lot of our riders liked it, whether they used the stock map, the mellow map, or the aggressive map. Um, kind of everyone was able to find the happy uh, sweet spot with the different power modes. And uh, yeah, the, the overall the Honda motor is very strong. You can ride taller gears and kind of lug the bike in the second, third, fourth gear. Um, or you can rev the bike out and it still makes plenty of power up top as well. So overall, very broad power band on this bike. Uh, one thing is, you know, the Kawasaki, this, and the Gas Gas, they all have the same 5-speed transmissions as the motocross bikes. But the Honda, in particular, seemed to run out of gear pretty fast and, and faster conditions. Um, part of that is just kind of how the engine works and how it revs pretty quick. But also maybe the gearing ratios as well um, could, could benefit from a re-gear. Just because you're running out of gear so quick on some of the higher speed stuff, and then the bike starts revving and maybe not handle as good. Um, that's one thing that we noticed was the Honda revved out 
uh, the quickest and ran out of gear the quickest. The Honda suspension um, overall seemed to be the, the stiffest and most balanced suspension out of them all. And considering we're on the west coast and have a lot of the faster conditions, almost all of our riders really like the Honda suspension for that reason. Um, some of the other bikes had maybe a stiffer fork or a stiffer shock, but then it was out of balance with a, a more than soft shock or fork um, on the other end. So the Honda was the stiffest yet most balanced uh, suspension package out of them all. It seemed to work the best for, for most of our riders, especially our faster riders or our heavier riders. One thing that kind of stands out with this Honda is the uh, chassis feel is quite different from uh, the rest of the bikes. The other three bikes, in a sense, feel similar in that they're very kind of smooth and forgiving and offer a lot of comfort, whereas this Honda is very precise, uh, maybe more rigid feeling, um, which is good and bad, but it's definitely it's more nimble and precise and offers a lot of feedback and you really feel kind of the ground underneath you. It was very apparent when the uh, the conditions got harder and slicker. Um, you could really feel kind of the bumps or it's in, through the corners, um, like flat sleepers. You really felt where the bike was going and what it was doing. And some riders really liked that, some riders didn't like that. So it's kind of a 50-50. a you can decide what you like and don't like in a chassis feel. Um, but this Honda definitely stood out in that it was the one bike that really you felt the chassis um, a lot in good and bad ways. And that kind of leads to the cornering on this bike. This bike is probably one of the better cornering machines out here. Um, you get in a rut, you get in any tight single track or anything. The bike is super nimble and agile feeling and it kind of follows through the ruts. And overall, just very good cornering motorcycle um, with that precision that you really need to uh, get through the corners and the tight stuff quick. With that said though, it does kind of lack a little bit of stability. Uh, I know we dropped the fork a little bit and the clamp to almost flush and that kind of helped that stability without sacrificing too much cornering. Uh, but with that cornering and precise chassis, you do lose a little bit of stability, which like I said, some people want the better cornering bike or some people want the more stable bike. So you kind of have to decide where you're, where you're uh, your heart flies and what kind of bike you want to be racing. Also in general, I felt like we felt like this Honda preferred kind of more rounded bumps and more traction. Um, kind of the square, the sharper the bumps and the edges and the less traction, this bike kind of didn't perform maybe as well. And a lot of that is that chassis feel. So if you get in the sand or mud or tacky dirt, um, this bike hooks up really well and feels really good. But you get that hard pack, blue groove, kind of square edge, then you kind of feel a little more of that chassis and you get a lot more feedback to the rider. A lot of the riders agreed with the uh, the cockpit. Um, Con Honda's always had that feel where you just jump on a Honda and it's, it's a Honda. And I feel like this generation specifically, um, you really get that kind of Honda comfort and almost all of our riders really were able to jump on this Honda and feel right at home with the feet, the seat to the pegs, the handlebar ratio. Um, all that felt spot on. So that was one plus that a lot of the, the riders that jumped back and forth noticed about the Honda was just the ergonomics and that Honda cockpit feel. Another th highlight on this Honda was the brakes. Um, the brake, the rear brake was actually almost too touchy and too strong, but the front brake a lot of our riders preferred. Uh, very touchy and grabby and strong. Um, for myself personally, I thought it was a little too touchy, but a lot of our riders, and I know a lot of our riders out there really like that touchy feel. Um, the braking power is really strong. The levers are good. Um, overall, the Honda brakes are probably one of the better ones in this group and uh, yeah a lot of our riders really seem to like the Honda brakes. Move over to the clutch though. The Honda clutch seemed to be kind of the most vague on off kind of you didn't have a great feel for it and a lot of our riders really didn't like that. Uh, they prefer the Kawasaki or the gas gas clutch or even the Yamaha cable clutch over the Honda hydraulic clutch. I know there's a couple of tr tricks out there to kind of get that feel better but uh, the stock trim, kind of that Honda, the clutch, it was very on-off and just doesn't have much modulation or feel for it, especially if you got in tighter stuff or in corners or ruts or something like that. Another thing that kind of the, some riders didn't like is the gas tank. It's very, it's a little wider and bulkier and top-heavy than some of the other bikes. And so a lot of our riders kind of felt either visually or just between their legs or whatever as they're riding. Um, that bigger tank really didn't suit well with them and kind of affected the bike's handling and just overall feel. But I know going to like an IMS tank, you can kind of get rid of that. <clears throat> and for a lot of racers, they do have to go to aftermarket tanks. Uh, but that is one thing to consider if you are leaving the stock tank, is just, it's a little wider and bulkier than most others. And in general, this Honda, the more aggressive you rode it and you kind of rode with 
intent and purpose, the bike handled really good, but as you got lazier and got tired and slacked off a little bit, um, is when some riders felt like it got, and got away from you and it was harder to manage. So if you're one that, you know, you're always racing or you're always trying to ride aggressive and kind of be on your toes and just kind of ride with the purpose, um, the bike handles really good, but if you're just going for a casual trail ride or just casually spinning some laps is where the Honda maybe the handling didn't kind of quite meet up to where you're riding more aggressive. Moving on to the Yamaha, this is definitely the horsepower king. Um, it's got the strongest, maybe probably most aggressive, uh, pipey, snappy, rev happy motor. Um, maybe not rev happy, but revs out pretty good. Uh, almost like a 350, uh, but this bike has tons of power. Uh, none of our riders felt the need to have more power. Maybe smoothing that out or kind of move the power around, but overall has plenty of power. Um, <clears throat> so it's one of the highlights of the Yamaha, along with the GYTR power tuning app. You can change all the mapping and kind of adjust it to how you how you want it and how you need it. And that's something that none of the bikes offer as far as customizable mapping for free. So that's a big plus with the Yamaha and was really able to sway, or not sway riders, but change riders' opinions on it. They weren't super happy with it in the beginning, but changed a couple maps and all of a sudden it's their favorite bike. So that's pretty big deal how, uh, how effective that GUITR tuning app is and it's free on your smartphone, so that's something cool. The bike can lug, the bike can rev. Um, the bike typically handles and responds better to lower RPMs than it does to higher RPMs, but the motor does put out plenty of power all the way around, so that's something that you know, riders of all, uh, <coughs> all preferences can, can find joy in. The transmission on the Yamaha is a five-speed wide ratio transmission, so it's the only one in the group that is different from the motocross model, and if you're doing any kind of real off-road racing, you need that, first, that lower first and second gear, for that taller fourth and fifth gears, it's really nice, really comes in handy. Um, you don't really have to change gearing to the different disciplines, you can just ride one setup and go from one extreme to the other and be fine. So that's something that none of the other bikes have and that's really a change you can't make to any of the other bikes. So it's nice that the Yamaha does come with that and um, a lot of our riders um, in certain racing conditions or riding conditions really like that five speed wide ratio training. Suspension on the Yamaha, um, the KYB components were very good. Uh, but the bike does feel unbalanced with a so, so really soft fork spring and it kind of just led to an overall unbalanced suspension and chassis feel. Um, if you're riding in small bumps, it actually worked really, really well. But as soon as the speeds got up, the bumps got bigger uh, and got into the whoops or big braking bumps and the bike kind of started seesawing back and forth and a lot of pitch and movement, the bike suffered a lot. And uh, I know going to stiffer fork springs alone will make wonders on this bike for most riders. Uh, but we're riding them stock, so it's something you have, to, you have to ride through. The suspension can be made much better. Um, like I said, the simple fork spring fix will, will dramatically change this bike. Um, but a lot of our riders comment on how soft that front end felt. And luckily it has a stiff valving to kind of mask it a little bit, but kind of that soft fork spring makes it feel harsh riding in stiffer valving and just unbalanced in general. Kind of the biggest complaint on the Yamaha 2 is also the ergonomics. Uh, it felt very cramped with a close uh, seat to peg ratio, a dished out seat, and then the seat to the handlebars. It was kind of all just messed up for most riders. Uh, so I know going to a taller seat and even lower pegs will really help this uh, cockpit out as well. But as a stock bike test, that's something uh, you really can't change. So that's the rider triangle and the ergonomics were a big complaint with this Yamaha. Uh, chassis feel, very stable, very uh, comforting, constant inspiring. Uh, probably the most stable chassis out here, and it works well in all types of conditions, uh, from rough, high-speed uh, whoops and chop to kind of motocross and braking bumps. Uh, works really well. <clears throat> Actually, this bike feels one that feels like it's one of the lightest bikes, even though it is the heaviest bike in the class. Um, <clears throat> just that with that pipey motor, and then how Yamaha has the mass centralization and center of gravity and everything. Uh, the bike feels really light in comparison to kind of the scale weight, which is quite amazing, but a lot of our riders were, uh, were amazed at that. Uh, but it just goes to show that the scale weight really doesn't mean much in terms of uh, how it feels on the track. The cable clutch design, a lot of our riders still do like a cable clutch, and this Yamaha cable clutch does work good, um, so that's a big plus. The air filter design is super easy, um, <clears throat> very easy to change and kind of monitor, and if you're not riding it in dust, you actually stays pretty clean because it doesn't get any dirt kicked up from the rear wheel. Um, so that's kind of a nice plus for the Yamaha as well. And finally we have the Gas Gas. This Gas Gas was very vanilla, 
kind of neutral bike. Didn't do anything great. Didn't do anything terrible, really. It was just very plain Jane. Um, hit all the marks. Just did everything well. Um, starting with the motor. Maybe this might be where the gas gas lacked the most for a lot of our riders. It just didn't have that 450 power. Uh, no one says 350 like power band, but with that 450 kind of torque and, and power. Um, bottom end really wasn't all that strong pulling power. Um, still had plenty of torque to ride the taller gears. But once you got through the bottom end, into the mid-range started picking up, and then a, a rev to the moon. Um, this bike for sure was a rev happy bike. Uh, the harder you revved it, harder you rode it, the better it got, the more, the faster it got. So a lot of our riders noticed that, and some liked that, some didn't like it. It's just a rider preference, but that's something to consider with this this gas gas. Overall, it's a very smooth and linear power, but yeah, it makes a lot of its power uh, in the higher RPM range. Suspension seemed to be the softest suspension out of the bunch, but it's also very balanced as well. Um, so although it was soft, it was it offered a lot of balance and didn't upset the chassis a whole lot. So that was a big plus. And then being able to add air pressure to the fork really helped um, with some of our faster riders tuning it to kind of the conditions and their speed. Um, really made a big difference. And it's something that since all the other bikes have spring forks, you really can't do. But the Gas Gas is air fork. It's a free mod basically. You just pump some air in it and you're good to go. Uh, the Gas Gas seemed to have the best kind of clutch pull and feel, uh, especially out of the hydraulic ones. Uh, a lot of our riders like that. Very consistent, good modulation, um, easy pull. Overall, just yeah, the, the gas gas, the clutch, and the brakes were also really good. Um, the levers and everything, the brake pedal were all in the right spot, the right feel. Um, those were big pluses with the gas gas. The ergonomics are very neutral. Peg, the seat, the handlebars, all that checked out good with all of our riders. Like I said, this bike in general is just a very neutral, good bike that really will apply to a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> very easy to ride and forgiving in all aspects, from the chassis to the motor to the suspension. Just an easy, um, kind of fun, just easy bike to ride. So that's a wrap on our four-feet shootout. If you want, check out our individual rider's opinions. Um, you can maybe identify with a certain rider or riding style that you see and kind of tone in to their kind of opinions. Maybe align yourself with them more to see maybe how the each bike would rank for you. Um, but overall, all these bikes are really good. They're all capable and uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with any of these bikes. So until then, stay tuned to dirtbiketest.com. We'll have more information on this. Uh, another future testing and products as well. So until then, we'll see you on the trail. If you liked what you saw in this video, come check us out over at dirtbiketest.com on the webs. We have bike tests, product tests, a lot of fresh dirt, and you can even support us by clicking through our links. Hopefully, we'll see you out in the trail.